is all prototype and we're still working on um, getting all of the illustrations and graphic design and stuff done. Um, Gray Fox is going to do an amazing job making everything look super awesome. Um, all of these like planet discs are all going to be like actual 3D planets on stands that are going to be kind of like, we're trying to do like a marbleized dice sort of look, like like some of the, the dice you see that people make, um, but they're going to be spheres, of course, and uh, be cool 3D planets on stands that are going around these rotating boards. Um, this is not going to be, this is not come out yet, but it's going to come out. Uh, what was that, Christine? What, what was a password? I forgot to look it up. It is, it is epic. Um, all lowercase. Okay. Looks like the other computers found it. Please. Um, so, so uh, Roy, how long has this been in development? That's me. Awesome. Looks like you're loading okay. in. I'm starting to see it coming in. Yeah, uh, Roy, how how long has this been in development? Wait, sorry, don't. Um, I've been working on it for a little over two and a half years now. Wow um but it's it's had like an interesting past like someday i'll be able to say all of the things that it's gone through but it's been pretty cool i've been really excited um i kept it super low-key and secret especially with some of the publishers i was working with at the time but um yeah i'm definitely excited that uh, gray fox has it now and are super excited on making it look amazing on kickstarter so that should be great yeah i i, I saw your video with some of the i don't know if that was kind of where your things are going or uh, I think it had the 3D planets like you were talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, my prototype has, like, 3D planets and all of that stuff, and I've prototyped a little bit of stuff. Um, we're currently getting um, samples on all of that stuff from manufacturing in China, and we're trying to make sure everything is perfect and good to go. There's a lot of ducks you have to get in the right rows before you can start a Kickstarter, you know? Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine. Uh, it seems like a, a, lot of, a lot of work to have a successful campaign. But yeah, and we're trying to do something a little bit interesting because, you know, most of the time people just like announce a campaign and have a few previews and then it's like, OK, back our game. We're really trying to we announce it super early and we're trying to give a lot of opportunity for people to play the game. So hopefully, like if they like the game, they'll go out and spread the word about the game and um, hopefully word of mouth will help carry the game across the finish line. You know, yeah, so we're super excited. About it. I think it's a good strategy. Hopefully it, it, it uh, plays out. One theory, I hope it helps the consumer or people that are interested in getting the game because it's really hard because, I mean, since we do, I, I mean, my main job is we do board game reviews and you can't even really review Kickstarters, you know, mm -hmm. because they're not even finished products right. yet and all of that stuff. It's it's hard for people to know if a game is good or not. Um, and then everything's just previews. So at least here we're giving just the public and random people the opportunity to play and test it out and they can form their own opinions and decide if it's something that works for their group. Hey, a quick uh, quick interjection from me. Um, I am trying to jump into the tabletop uh, simulator room, and the room is currently full. Uh, oh. Any chance it can be expanded or um, something? Oh, did I? I might have to go out and go back in. That's annoying. Um, I signed up. It said, well, when I went in the table, it I can said it's for seven. That's so strange. Okay, I'm just going to max it all the way up to ten. There we go. Um, see if it'll let you do it now. I am going to try. Yeah, I'd run a smaller game earlier in the week, so I just randomly Perfect. changed it down. I don't know what the difference in the, the, the size number is, I guess, unless you're playing public games. What do you think the player count's going to be? Um, we're going to have the base game is going to be one to four players. It's going to have a solo mode as well. Um, but then we're going to, we're trying to figure out exactly how we're going to do, um, like the add on stuff for the game, as far as like add ons and expansions to make it even more. So you guys are playing basically, um, a giant version of the game with, uh, basically extra players added in. The, the crazy thing is the fact that this game is all simultaneous. Um, the player count doesn't affect the play time that much because people are constantly always doing stuff most games you're taking turns around the table in this game you're always all taking your same turn um one two three four five six seven eight okay i will pop out of i will get out of right. white so somebody else can take it i will be uh that particular one sweet <laughs> oh no oh no i'm sorry okay. i was trying to pan okay, over the board. <laughs> all right i guess the board hold on a second Okay, let me let me lock it down. 
cool. Um, cool. Well, I guess it looks like we're pretty much all here. Um, Sonic, do you want to pick a color or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? Which color's left? I was just observing. One, two. Which color's not taken? Um, looking uh, over, there's blue, purple, red, black, or green, or gray. Oh, it's purple. Yep. Oh, uh, green. Is, oh, you know what it is? Purple's it's not the right green color. Is... Oh, that you're right. Oh, sorry, let me fix it. Do 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 do. Hand size. Switch this one to purple. Okay, cool. Let me fix purple. I guess I can be purple if nobody else wants to be that one. Sweet. All right, let's do this thing. All right, I will do the explanation here. Um, so this is Last Light. This is a fast-paced 4X game set right before the heat death of the universe. We're all going to be playing different alien races, racing to gather 20 light. Um, this is the last white dwarf star in the entire universe, and we're trying to gather light to maybe be able to outlast the heat death of the universe. There aren't enough resources to go around, so we're all trying to save our civilization and our families by collecting light and wiping out all the other alien races. Um, basically, this game, all of the actions are done simultaneously. Um, so all of the cards in your hand, you have six different action cards, and we will all choose one of them out, and you will flip it face down from your hand, hold it out, and then be able to flip it and reveal what the card is. So um, then everybody reveals their cards at the same time, and then we take all of those actions simultaneously. So all of those things happen, everybody does their thing, and the game is so fast because how fast these actions can trigger and the fact that you're never waiting on other people except when they're like picking their action cards and things like that you're mostly just going and going and going and going and going um so we'll talk through all of the action cards here so the first one here is research what research does is it allows you to draw four tech cards and add two of them to your unresearched techs so there are two tech decks here they are randomized um, but you will draw four cards off of those. You'll discard two of them, and the other two you will be able to build. If you look over here, we have several different technologies um, of the three different types of technologies that are in the game. So the first one here is AI targeting. This is a ship ability, so it will go on your ship. So let's pick a player here. Oh, let's just say blue. Say blue got this uh, thing here. They could uh, then be able to build it on one of the ships. You can put it on your small ship, your medium ship, or your large ship. Um, then that ship would have that ability. AR targeting costs one green crystal to play, and it, basically if you roll a ship ability um, symbol on the die, you can pay a blue to treat it as a hit. So normally a ship ability would just be a... Whoops, what did I do? I took it into my hand. That's not good. Um, hold on, let me rewind. Um, but um, you're trying to get the two and the... Um, the two or the five in combat to be able to use that there. So the two has a little burst on it, and the five has a burst and a hit on it as well. So you could treat that as, if you paid a blue when you had AI targeting, you could treat that as two hits instead of just one. And we'll talk about combat a little bit later, but that has the ship abilities. They can upgrade your ships in all sorts of different cool ways. On the ship mods here, what they do is they upgrade the stats of your ship. All of your ships can normally only go one space. Um, the engines here what they allow you to do is you can i'll just do it on green here you can pick a your small ships your medium ships or your large ships and you'll be able to actually make them go two speed instead of just one and also in tabletop simulator if you hover over it and press u it pops underneath so now green's medium ships would be able to go one one further um and of course tabletop simulator is annoying to try to get the cards and stuff out there are mods that upgrade all sorts of different things they can upgrade your dice you roll in combat. They can upgrade your hit points of your ships, the shields there. That's how many hits you take in combat. They can also give your ships bombardment. If you look at your big ship on your little shipboard here, um, the only the big ship can destroy enemy constructs, which we'll talk about in the future. But you can get all sorts of different mods to make those things better. Um, um, so, then... so is there a uh, quick question? Is there any limit to the number of upgrades you can have on a ship? Or So you can have one ship ability. Um, and you can have one mod per ship level. So the level one, you can have one ship mod. The level two, you can have two ships mods. And level three, you can have three ship mods. Okay. Um, then the last ship type here is a civilization. Um, so if you look here, 
we have uh, warp or link warp. Um, this costs a blue crystal to play, and then you can move one of your ships to a planet you control and exhaust this card. So this will just help you move your ships around to planets that you control. Um, when you exhaust a card, you just flip it face down. Um, when you play the refresh card, you will be able to unexhaust it. There's plenty of alien powers and um, tech cards that will exhaust. You'll have to play refresh to be able to use them again. So that's basically tech. This allows your alien races to be super asymmetrical from each other, and you can upgrade them as the game goes along. So that's research. Um, the next action here is mine. So what mine does is this is the main way to gather resources during the game. So when you play mine, you gather resources for each of your mining constructs, regardless of if a ship is there or not. So everybody starts with a mining construct on their um, blue space here. This would gain a blue crystal each time you played the mine card. Say, um, where is the thing here? If I had a planet here, let me just grab a random planet. So if I had a planet here, you flip this over, and I had a construct on this, this would actually is a special rare planet that actually would give me light if I mined from it. So you can gain light. There are several different types of crystals. You can get blue, green, purple, and then light. And that's kind of like the value of them, and it's kind of tiers up from there. Um, if I had a construct on the green space on my, my, my colony ship here, I would get a green and a blue. And of course, the more plants you go out there and colonize and the more constructs you get out, each time you play the mine card, you're going to get more resources. And in theory, turn those resources into ships, tech, and even light to be able to try to win the game. Um, so that is mine. Speaking of these constructs, how do you actually get constructs out? The construct action. So what the construct action allows you to do is you can build ships in your colony ship sector. Whenever anybody builds ships, they just build them in the space um, where they start. Um, that is where your colony ships are coming in to colonize the star system. Um, you can build as many as you have crystals to buy. So the um, small ships cost one blue, the medium ships cost a blue and a green, and your big ships cost a purple. And of course, they have better stats going up um, as that goes along. But all of them that are built are going to be built just directly in your colony ship sector. Then you can add a construct to a planet that you've annexed. What that means is if I control this planet here, let me get all my cards out of the way. If I was in this area here with this planet, um, I could take the construct action and build a construct there. If red came in here, which I'm sure red would never do, you'd never, you'd never come in my area, right? And, oh, and no, I'm not violent. <laughs> but, but if another ship was there, you would have to take out the other ship or find a way to get them out of that space before you could construct on that planet. Um, but you can always construct on your colony ship um, in the two spaces that are there. There's a green space and a blue space. The green is pretty much strictly better. But you might want to do blue if you want to build a bunch of small ships real quick. Um, but yeah, that is the construct action. You're trying to build those, of course, so that you can mine them for resources in the future. Um, the next action here is trade. What trade does is you get to pick two of the things off of the trade card. You can either gain a blue crystal, you can turn two blue into a green, you can turn two green into a purple, or turn two purple into a light, which light is the point of the game. If you get 20, you win. Um, then um, you choose an opponent and they will gain a blue from the supply. So if I played this, I would choose another player, preferably a player that I thought was maybe behind, or maybe another player plays trade on the same turn. We could both give each other blue crystals off of that bottom part of the trade action there. Um, and um, you can choose the same one if you want to. So you could just gain two blue if that's the, the, what you ended up wanting to do, which will probably happen more likely in the early game and things like that. Awesome, well that is trade. Um, all of these action cards that you play out are going to stick on the table. Um, so you can't play them again until you play your refresh card. What refresh does is it allows you to unexhaust all of your other cards. So whether you have text or alien abilities, anything that has flipped over, you can unflip it over so you can use it again. You also heal any of your ships. Sometimes ships can take persistent damage in combat, so you put damage on ships and things like that. It would heal any of that off. And then you take all of your other action cards back into your hand so you can play them again. And Refresh is also the most important card in the game because it is the main way you gain light during the game. Um, so the claim was the second part of Refresh. What that allows you to do is you can collect light um, for constructs depending on where they are. So um, if you are on the outer ring here, which is all of these planets out here, for each construct you have in a space um, on the outer ring, you will gain one light when you play the refresh card. So this space would give me one light if I controlled it. 
Um, if I controlled one in the inner ring, it is closer to the white dwarf star in the middle of the star system. I would gain two light for this space. Um, but they have to be not blockaded. Of course, this red came in here and sat on my space, which he would never do, ever. Um, <laughs> if he was in the space when I tried to do refresh, I wouldn't gain light because this space is blockaded. So if somebody's running away with the game or somebody's doing well, you want to try to go sit in there on their colonies so that way they're not going to be gaining light off of um, that every time they refresh because that is really good. And the main point of the game is running to the sitter, trying to gather light as fast as possible. Because um, the first player to 20 wins the game. Um, then the last part of the refresh card here is that um, if you have built at least four technologies, you collect one light. So we're all kind of trying to get at least four technologies so each time you play that card, you're going to gain a light, which is really good. Um, then, uh, let's see here. Then, uh, after, the only way to get refresh back, so refresh doesn't come back by itself when you play it down. It stays on the table. So once everybody has played out their refresh card, once every refresh card is in play, then um, everybody gets their refresh card and puts it back in their hand. The first player token actually goes to the next player and the board itself rotates. So this is an interesting face area control game because the areas you control are going to float in front of your opponent. You're also not always attacking your neighbor because new people are always floating in your way as the game goes along. Um, and it's really hard to turtle because places you control are going to float in front of somebody else. And I'll demonstrate how that works now. Um, so basically the middle is going to rotate like this and the outside is going to rotate like this. So basically, the center of the star system moves faster than the edges of the star system, just like a real solar system because of science. Um, but yeah, also, when the board itself rotates, you are going to gain light if you have a ship in the middle here. So for each ship you have in the very middle space, it's basically called gathering light. So if you are gathering light in the middle, each ship you have there, you're going to get one light when the board itself actually rotates which is sometimes hard to predict because everybody else has to have played their refresh out for that to happen. Mm -hmm. But you can always just camp a ton of ships in the middle um, and try to gain light off of them. But of course, the other players are not necessarily going to like you to do that. Um, so that is the refresh card. Talking about all this stuff and moving ships around and all that stuff, um, how do you actually move ships? The last card is command. So what command does is it allows you to move all of your ships. All of your ships have a speed of one. They can just move one space. Then, um, whenever you move into a space, um, if there are any unrevealed planets or exploration tokens, you would flip them over. Um, sometimes it will have events on it. This one doesn't specifically have an event on it, um, but there could be, like, say, an exploration token in the space that would flip over and do some sort of thing. This one would be amazing if it was in the game. This says you immediately gain a small ship in that space. All of these exploration events on the planets and on the exploration tokens are all positive events. There are cards around the table for everybody to look kind of what some of them do um but it's all really good stuff so you want to try to race out there and explore as much stuff as possible as fast as you can because you just want to be able to trigger as many of those as you can because it's awesome um and then if other players if players if a player that plays command i should lock these because it's kind of not good. um yeah if another player moves into a space with a command card you would then be able to make an attack um, if you if you were the person that played command. So and the and attacking in this game is very sort of like asynchronous. Only the person that plays the command card gets to actually make the attack. So you will roll dice equal to your combat. Um, you are looking for hits. So the hits are on the three and the four side of the die. Um, it is also a five is a hit and a special ability. So sometimes you could have special abilities that could trigger um, on your different ships. Um, the two is just a special ability, so if you don't have any special ability, that counts as a miss, but it could trigger something really cool. Um, the one is completely a miss, so it just counts as nothing. But the six is a hit and then a reroll, so it's basically exploding dice that bursts, so even the smallest ship could take out the biggest ship. Your small ship rolls one dice, your medium ship rolls two dice, and your big ship rolls three dice. Your big ship takes three hits to actually knock out, the medium ship takes two hits to knock out, and the small ship takes one hit to knock out. We knock out another ship, you'll take it over here, which I would never destroy one of the red ships at all. That would be mean. But you would take it and put it on your graveyard card. Um, if you kill off four units at all from any players at all, then you are able to um, turn those ships back over to that player. 
and then you will gain one light because your your alien species basically salvages the energy out of those ships. Um, also, your opponent can always pay you the resources to build the ship to be able to get the ship back from your graveyard. But the resources will actually go to that player that has it in their graveyard. Um, but yeah, and that is basically how all of it works. Um, yeah, I would normally describe asteroids and how those work, but there are no asteroids because we're playing an eight-player game and we're using the entire map. Um, but yeah, so that's that's basically all of the action cards. Um, if there is any discrepancy in turn order, which normally happens, can sometimes happen with the command card, if players are right beside each other, we will then go in turn order. So um, depending on who plays command, you would look clockwise from the first player and say say red had played command, he would be able to move before me if I had also played command. And moving first is really good for exploring things, but moving last is pretty good for being able to know where you're going to be in combat and not be in combat. But all the combat rolls are actually simultaneous. So whether your ship gets destroyed or not, you're still going to be able to roll your dice to attack back. Roy, so that is all the action cards. Roy, I, yes. I have a question. So is for, in, in regards to research, is that the turn order for that as well? Like who's um, drawing cards first or that, that doesn't matter? So these are not actually in play. They're in a deck right. of random cards. And everybody will just be able to randomly draw cards out of the deck. You are guaranteed four random cards. Um, but other than that, you just draw them and then you discard two. It doesn't matter the order that people draw the cards in. So that doesn't make any difference. <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, and the only last thing here is um, everybody has a planetary achievement card. So you're going to choose one of these planetary achievement cards to keep, and you're going to discard the other um, three. So basically the way that's going to work is if you choose the black one, um, you would basically be trying to get um, two black planets during the game. You would want to control them, which means you actually have to have your construct on them. If you are able to actually control two of them, um, you can immediately reveal your planetary achievement and say, ha, I have two, I gain two light. Um, purple, you need three, and you gain three light. Blue, you need four, and you gain four light. And green, you need five, and you would actually gain five light, which seems like it's really hard to do. But of course, if you make that happen, that's a quarter of the game. Also, you can play these cards at any time, so you don't have to actually play it immediately when you gain control of them. You can play maybe when it's threatened, to like lose control of it and therefore like hiding a little bit of the points that you currently have. But at the beginning of the game, we'll each pick one of these to keep and we will get rid of the other um, three. Um, so everybody can just flip the ones face down that they don't want and then just set them off to the side. Okay. Um, and I think we're going to do this. Okay. I have a question for ships that take damage. How do you mark? So there are damage things over here. A lot of times ships are just destroyed in combat, but if the damage is persistent, we'll put a damage counter on them, and um, then it'll stay until they actually refresh. Once they refresh, all of the damage counters will go away, but they could have an opportunity to actually um, heal themselves before that happens, you know. And then we're we're limited okay. to these uh, this number of ships, right? Uh, I guess it's... Uh, yeah, the, the number of pieces of plastic in the game is how many ships you can have out. What are the round tokens for next to our ships? Oh, these are all of your constructs. So basically, these are the things you're going to be putting out on the planets and your colony ships to be able to gather you resources and show that you control that area. Okay. I think this is... And not, I have a couple other questions. Um, okay. Can you go into another area that somebody else occupies without battling them? Yes, you don't actually have to do combat if you don't want to. Okay. But, um, I mean, there's no penalty to you um, if you go in that space, um, except the fact that they might attack you back on the next turn if they have an opportunity to, you know. Yeah. Okay. And your, I guess, home planet? Can you ever lose those? Um, the actual colony ships, um, they can't. The constructs on them can't be destroyed, and you can't actually lose um, your colony ship at all. So, um, okay. mostly this game is very much racing towards the middle as fast as possible because the planets in the middle are very um, valuable for light. Also, being in the very middle space is valuable for light, and all the planets on the outer ring are valuable for light as well. 
Um, so it's a race to 20. Um, so a lot of times going and messing up one player directly might not benefit you as much unless you have some sort of strategy to like kill off another ship and be able to gather light from that or something crazy. Um, and then the only last thing is everybody has an alien card. These are all going to be beautifully illustrated cards um, once, <laughs> once Gray Fox does all the illustrations. Um, and uh, they have all sorts of different powers. Normally in a game, you will have two of them and you'll select one of them to be your alien power and discard the other one. Since this is just a demo, um, I have ones dealt out to everybody. Um, but I'm not going to go through every single alien power, but if people have specific questions about them, um, go ahead and uh, let me know. Mm. Um, and I can kind of cover them as that comes up. So Ray Mine, for example... I mean, I understand it. It says I gain the light after having three ships in my graveyard instead of four. Am I returning yes. the ships at three, or do I have to wait yes. for four? You, you do return them at three, so that it, it, instead of having to be all the way up to four, you're better at salvaging the ships. That doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to uh, want to kill people more, but, you know, killing them more helps you gain light faster. And, and then this one, it says when you build a construct on a planet, immediately gain the crystals that it produces. So if it produces, I don't know, do plants only produce one type of crystal or can they produce multiple? Yeah, they'll only produce, well, sometimes you can have rare opportunities where they produce different colors, but the actual token under here will show you the color. Okay. Or show the color that that will do. Ah, so uh, okay. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Um, but you actually have to flip it over to see what it is. So there's a strong exploration element into this game because all of this stuff is randomly seeded. So not even I know what everything is. So. Uh. Cool. Um, but yeah, so we will um, now, once everybody has selected their planetary achievement, um, you will be able